Guys, we have a special episode this week because me and Sophie are away, so we're recording this in advance. However, we are talking about one of mine and Dill's favourite films of all time growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's in that category. Do you, Dill? It was a, it's definitely a treasured childhood film. I there don't know if go. it holds up as much as I... Well, yeah. I like it. But. Yeah, well, you know, and Soph has only just recently seen it. I showed her. I, I was uh, reveling in happiness while I was watching it, and you... You weren't a fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're talking about, you've already guessed from the, uh, well not guessed, it's, <laughs> like, it's on the thumbnail, it's on the title, we're talking about Spy Kids. Here we go. Welcome back to another episode of Tripod Talk, where we talk anything and everything about films. My name is Matt Lidster, I am your host, and as always, I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Miss Sophie Ellis, and Mr. Adil Anwar. Hey. Hey. Anwar. Hey. Anwar. Film war. <laughs> Onion. <laughs> Onion. Ah, oh, so, <laughs> hi. I, I'm not, yeah, you, you're doing all right. We're, we've been talking today and stuff, but uh, we are talking about, there's no film news this week. Uh, because nothing happened. Yeah, we, we tried. <laughs> there wasn't any. Bad news. There was. Yeah, no. Zero God, news. This week is something been... huge is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. But uh, yeah, no. We're going to go straight into uh, Spy Kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want to give us a summary of the film before we go into it? Or I mean, you're both looking at me as if I want any part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I just think it'd be funny to hear you summarize, but no, I'm not going to make you do that. Ex oh, I was going to. I make don't it mind. <laughs> I can try. You yeah. go for it. <laughs> go for it. It's forty minutes of silence. <laughs> no, I'd no, go on. What me? Yeah, anyone. Okay. Uh, what Jam Jarman and Cooney. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen and Junie Cortez's parents are well known international spies who've been called into action but are captured. So it's up to them, the kids, Jum Carmen and Junie, to <laughs> save <laughs> I can't even say the names. To save the parents and the world by becoming Spy kids. Hey. 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 And to note, they didn't know the parents were retired spies. No, yeah. Well, they, the they didn't know, but to other people, they were. Yeah. Known. Well known yeah. is not great for a spy, but it works, <laughs> within, <laughs> work, works within the context of the film. Yeah. So, uh, just to kind of put this into con uh, a little bit of context for me and Dill, we both watched this growing up, separately. Obviously, yeah. we didn't know each other. <laughs> when we were younger. Uh, well, we knew each other in school. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's something I've always held very dear to my heart. I've always loved these films. And, uh, yeah, there's more to go through. I, I, I didn't know if we were going to talk about the trilogy today. Yeah. Uh, but, no, we're talking about one, because I think so. I can only manage one. But yeah. that's fine with me. Well, we had a separate conversation, didn't we, about those, like, nostalgic childhood films that you watch. And, like, every now and again, you'll look and see how they were received. Mm. And I remember, like, Space Jam was one for me where I remember it so as, like, an incredible film. Mm. But then I saw it was, like... It's like less than five out of ten on IMDb, and like when you watch them back, they really don't hold up as well. No. So we thought it'd no. be interesting to kind of go back into a few of those films and see, you know, what we thought looking at them a bit more kind of critically as some kind of adults, kind mm. of adults, kind of adults. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly before I go into what you thought, so Dill, did it hold up? There's, it's a strange one. Like, there's definitely bits that I was like stupid, but I can give them credit for. Maybe it was kind of deliberate. Maybe he was taking the mick a bit because mm -hmm. it was made by Robert Rodriguez, and I give him a lot of credit for being like a really solid filmmaker. I did enjoy it too, and there were some good jokes in it. So yeah, it was solid. Yeah, it wasn't a disappointment, which is pretty much good going when you watch one of those films you loved as a kid. Yeah, no. So, uh, so <laughs> obviously you've seen this as an adult, so it's a <laughs> yeah. little bit different for you what did you think of the film you know i wouldn't have minded reviewing spy kids 3 because that was better than ready player one yes in that the one was sylvester stallone guys yeah. come on yes 3d one that was really early was, 3d as well yeah it was <laughs> yeah that's back much back. better it was the same film but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i kind of enjoyed it I only watched it because you were just whinging on, and then it came on to Netflix. Not whinging. I you like can watch it tonight. Oh no! Don't don't get me wrong. I'm watching the second one tonight, and then the third <laughs> one the night after. Well, I had no choice. When you gotta that. finish a trilogy, you gotta finish a trilogy. You know, I'm not counting the fourth one as part of anything because it's no. nothing to do with the uh, good same cast and people. Yeah. yeah well, they they cast uh, Colin and Junie, and they have like minor cameos in it, but mm. nah. Not the same. It's just a check in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. But yeah, it was all right. I think I'm, I'm more enjoyed watching you, like, 
watch it because you were still laughing at the same stuff you probably would when you were younger. Yeah. Um, and I, I liked stuff like, was it Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Yeah. Stuff like that. So I expected to like it a bit more than I did. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying to Dub, but literally the only point I can bring up that I liked was the thumbs. <laughs> the <laughs> characters of them, that's the only thing I like about it. And the, the food. The whole but we'll film. get into the food. How can a whole film be all right, but you only like one? The only thing that stuck up. out to make a comment about. Yeah, because I, I like the idea of like floop and, you know, they convert people into monsters on the show. And mm. I don't know. It's just, it weren't my type of childhood film. Yeah, you watch stuff like Coraline and uh, what's the other stuff? Caroline's literally the only thing that's coming into my head that I've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ed, Edward hits his hands, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of like darker stuff or even like horror stuff as like Goosebumps TV shows and stuff like that. Hmm. Rather than anything like this or Space Jam or, you yeah. know. Yeah. But, you know, I'm happy you both like it. So oh, just yeah, as no, a warning, well, I'll say nothing throughout this podcast probably. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was going to say, uh, I'm, I'm a bit torn between the two because like as much as i do want it to hold up because I, it, I do love this film i don't think it does with everything else that i've watched since then mm -hmm. especially as a, a kind of adult now um yeah I mean, what, what were we talking about kind of adults you're you're a lawyer um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I my know, own business you know <laughs> when you're that age and you see like an adult you think there's a different thing to what it is like you think there's mm -hmm. a, knowing what you're doing and like <laughs> I don't know. Just doesn't quite feel like I'm there yet. Mm. So how old were you when you watched it then? Oh, when it came I'm out? Uh, I don't know. Maybe six or seven. Six or seven. Well, and it came out in 2001. So I was about six or seven. Yeah, no, it must have been. Yeah. That time. I don't remember watching it in the cinema, but I remember having... This is how long ago it was. I had it on video. I had the DVD. I still remember the DVD. Case. I had the DVDs. Yeah, I had the videos. I didn't. No, yeah. Jeez. I had like, a lot of videos. I had Rocky yeah. Form video. Watched that <laughs> a hundred million times. So what stood out about it then? Uh, uh, I, I think for me at the time, I think it was just the fact that kids could be like, <laughs> like you know, obviously I was of that age at the time. You're looking it up to like these other kids who were just like, yeah, we're going to go save the world. And it's like, that's cool. I want to go do that. So you're kind of yeah. like on the journey with them mm -hmm. to a certain extent. I mean, now, obviously, I'm not on the journey with them. And they do look they do a good job with either sibling as well with like Junie being kind of the nervous outcasty kid and then mm -hmm. there's like Carmen's the kind of like stroppy but really she's kind of nice at heart well although Soph doesn't think so she's like you know they kind of cater to the medium so you can kind of identify with both of them at different times and mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. we're like so I'd be like Carmen Junie's been bloody annoying and then you're like yeah. oh but Junie yeah but she's kind yeah, of yeah they, they have a nice uh, balance yeah what's the, what's the word I'm thinking I don't know the word I'm thinking of it will come to me later probably but they've got like a nice uh like chemistry sort of mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. uh, like you know the brother sister role also with like the parents as well they have like a like you can see that they have chemistry together as well mm. uh like all, all the characters really like I, I think that's what i like about it as well is uh the exaggeration of characters mm -hmm. really it's like such an extreme situation that they're in and they're, yeah. they're, they're kind of like caricatures of characters mm -hmm. to a certain extent but i think that's his kind of style I think it's deliberate like that's yeah. why i find it funny going back to it now having seen like you know such a big cast like daddy trejo alan cumming banderas oh yeah Carl, like i've seen them all in such varied like real acting kind of different like dark roles so to see them in this it's just you can tell and even with Robert Rodriguez, like, being as kind of prolific as he is, even where there's details that seem stupid, I can tell that it's deliberately done in, like, a kind of tribute to the films he kind of loved as a kid. Mm. And then just, like, in making it play for children as well. So I think I had a bit more of a kind of forgiveness for stuff like that because I thought all of this is going to be deliberate because everybody who's done this has done such really good extra stuff. Mm. Like, they wanted to make a kid's film, they wanted to make it as fun and kind of ridiculous as possible, and that's yeah. what they've done. Also, t two names you uh, missed out there. One that I only just remembered now. We've got Robert Patrick, yeah. but also George Clooney. Yeah, right I was going to say, the craziest <laughs> cameo. I totally forgot President Clooney. Yeah. Yeah. He'd love that, wouldn't he? Yeah, I, I do I do love all the characters in this, and oh, I, I think for me as well, I love spy films. Yeah. So, like, all the little gadgets they have and all the little 
unique ways they kind of solve the problem and stuff like that, you know. I don't know, it just makes me smile. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any sort of, like, I think we'll point the klaxon in as well, just in case, so we can kind of talk about more yeah. stuff. Spoilers. And, uh, <laughs> we'll do the spoilers stuff. So, yeah, if you've not seen the film... Uh, Wait, Don't bother. Would, wait, would would we recommend someone to watch it? Is that no? We'll see how it comes out the review. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we'd recommend. Maybe show it to your kid if your kid's a bit of a goofy, <laughs> like you know, because it wouldn't play as much now as it did back in the day. And yeah. kids' film have come on a lot as well since then. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you know, there's a lot more of like an extra level of layers with jokes for the parents, and it's watchable for kind of any age range. But if you think about what el- what other kids' films were getting made back then, it's getting held to a different standard than it is to nowadays. Mm. I'm trying to think what actually came out during that time. Around 2000. Uh, Just before Toy Story, but that kind of changed the game, so that's not fair to do to it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Uh, But anyway. uh, Space Jam. Space (laughs) Jam. Wasn't that 94? Might be 94, yeah. I I don't know the dates. Might be 99. But uh, yeah, it could be. (laughs) But uh, shall we sound the klaxon just in case? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I, I guess there's not that much to kind of go in. Like, uh, you know, kind of going through plot points and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's more just the ridiculousness of, like, I, I do actually like the way that kind of going into more of the structure and stuff, even though it seems weird to do that with with a film like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it's quite well paced because it's such, like, a fast-moving film. Yeah. It's, it a doesn't lot happens really... when you think about it. Oh, yeah, like, loads happens. And also there's a nice bit of character development in there as well, which is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Um but at the same time, just the breakneck speed and certain things that happen, like they uh, go, you know, finding out that the parents are spies, then go into the belt house, and then you know, corrupt agents come after them, so they're on jetpacks, and then they end up like finding their uncle, long long lost uncle, who then they steal their plane to get to a castle. It's just like <laughs> it sounds it. ridiculous yeah. when you put it out like that, but at the same time, it in the context of the film, it flows really well. Uh, One side of it that I did like, that again, I think Sophie could kind of emphasize that a bit more like now is that there's definitely certain things in there that just put in f- because kids would think they were cool yeah and which still hold up as cool so we always talked we kept talking <laughs> about the mcdonald's thing that you put in the microwave oh, yeah. comes up with a big mac jetpacks are one that we thought were cool mm-hmm. the plane the submarine secret door and like a lot of it the climbing frame in the house like that's not even a spy thing <laughs> but i was obsessed <laughs> with the climbing frame i wanted that badly as a kid yeah. I was like, what is this ridiculous shit house I've got <laughs> without <laughs> without a climbing frame in there? Oh, no, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I had lightsabers, basically, as well. Like, yeah. I don't know if you remember the lightsaber like fight, but that was a bit weird. Even just down to the sound effects as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, one thing I do remember, I don't know why it always jumps out at me, but I always, I like watched it back at night. I was like, this is ridiculous. Is that, <laughs> do you remember when they're escaping... Um, from the people after the corrupt agents come after them and then they walk onto like one of those road tram things oh uh, and oh Carmen yeah. just links Either. her arm with some random woman like some random couple are on that road tram thing and carmen then, and junie get on and carmen oh, just, and just links. carries on yeah no i remember that <laughs> i was <laughs> that, just like what <laughs> like yeah as a kid it didn't drop out to me i don't know probably set a bad example like i would have just run up to random <laughs> adults and just been like hello <laughs> 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 and like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I don't know. <laughs> oh, with that accent as well, that'd be I brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that was weird. It was yeah. some weird, like boundary stuff. Like, did none of these adults think, like, why are we trying to attack these children? Mm. Like, I don't get paid yeah. enough for this. I mean, uh, that, there's a lot of uh, what's what's the phrase? Uh, like <laughs> plot holes. suspend. You got to suspend your Sus- belief. Oh yeah, suspend. Yeah. yeah. So suspend. you got yeah, you've got to suspend your disbelief. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you were halfway there <laughs> kind of yeah but th- there's a lot you have to just kind of accept and move on and the thing is when you're film. a kid yeah. it wasn't an issue doing that oh yeah so no. that's why it's fine and i suppose yeah i think the big thing that i've just kind of realized is that like when you're getting held to the standard of a kid's film now it's very different to what it was then so we can be kind of grateful for that that like films that are technically directed at kids are holding up as much as they are now mm. but back then it was fine like you you as a kid were just like oh shiny <laughs> and all jumping around and look at the kind of they get to just wander around the world by themselves mm. and it seemed cool that way and that you know having cool parents like that as well like i think all of us kind of hoped our parents had some cool secret like back, back like backstory and it's just like now 
<laughs> they just met at uni and then had some kids. <laughs> <laughs> so what don't you like about the film? Oh, film? don't turn on me. <laughs> um, like, because obviously me and Dill have a lot of, like, stock in this because we're like yeah this is this we love this growing up obviously you've seen it as an adult so you don't have that uh i guess bias, bias towards it so i think obviously being an adult as we've clearly just made a point of being <laughs> you see I a guess. lot of like how the cgi's developed over the years so to go back and then think oh my god they must have been like positioned in a certain way to try and get this like, crappy cgi I like the thumb CGI though. I think it was. I like the good. thumb. Although yeah, it definitely didn't hold up for other parts. Well, yeah, when they're falling from somewhere or, or like in the plane. Yeah, getting, stuff getting... like that just yeah. doesn't. Though to be fair, I always think like that's always a weird time period for me because some bits would look real, kind of, <laughs> if you have like a nice blurred effect to it in the <laughs> background. So it's kind of like yeah, that could work, because, and you kind of understand that that's like part of the scene. Yeah. I don't know, it was a weird time for CG. I mean, we'll forgive Spy Kids 3D. Hey, come on. <laughs> it was a much like more Spy interesting plot. I, I, I just reckon. meant for the CG. Oh, I see, yeah. But, uh, but I think with... Um, I, I enjoy, say, the summary, like the actual plot of it. It sounds like it could be interesting. And I do relate to the boy <laughs> more than Carmen. And I just remember through all three films, I was like... How many bitch? Oh, what a bitch. Uh. <laughs> and I don't know why, because I feel like I must have been like her at some point. That's probably why. But I've never had a younger sibling, we so I suppose. Some point. Hey. <laughs> I mean. To be fair, it had the great, we saw, like, we were skimming through it again before we did it today, and the whole twist with, the they introduced the fact that one of the kids has oh, a, yeah. wears a diaper. Yeah. And then Junie calls out Carmen on it in the play, and, like, I kind of lost my shit a little bit. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, that's such a great, like, good that's just good comedy mm. like there mm. is moments like that where it's like genuinely like especially with alan cumming sometimes and the the other minion guy like there are some really kind of funny moments yeah i mean there's times that i was laughing and i do i do think the actual characters are interesting and the villains in themselves are interesting mm -hmm. it just felt a bit it got it gets stupid at points yeah yeah it oh. just felt a bit forced for me to watch because i was watching it because you were excited about it coming on netflix oh yeah it's not the kind so. of film you would otherwise go out of your way to see either no. like who, what reason would there be really to revisit that for you yeah no i i definitely you have wouldn't. little baby carmen no. <laughs> <laughs> named it <laughs> ingrid not Ingrid. Ingrid's an old person's name. Right, debate. Is old... Ingrid, Ingrid is a nice name. Actually, I don't mind you bringing Ingrid back. Right. There you go. I'm on board. Yeah. Don't know why I've got to say in this. Matt? Ingrid? Ingrid? Uh, I mean, we've already said No, because what's the shorthand for Ingrid? The second one. You, you need like a nickname-y thing. Um, you can't call it Ingy. <laughs> no. Grid? No. Gr Gritty. That's what I mean. Gritty. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, oh. I do think you need like a kind of pet name, though. This is such an unsequitur. I know this, we really shouldn't be. That's all right. <laughs> Junie? No, no not, not, not Junie. No. What about our middle names? Do you remember what they were? No, you I guys should. Uh, yeah, we're going back to our baby names. With, uh, awesome. well, what's Carmen's middle name? Oh, uh, Carmen Elizabeth Juanita Costa Brava. Escalada Cortez or something. Yeah. I think I got most Costa of that, right? I think you added Escalada. It's a car, mate. <laughs> uh, I've always loved her. Escalada Lipster. <laughs> Escalada. <laughs> so oh, no. baby names, uh, We're not even pregnant. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, what you're, a you're definitely not. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, it's, it's still a joint thing. Not a <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure I just remember how finding it's so weird because then, like, I remember watching Desperados when I, uh, the Antonio Banderas film when I was too young, and like seeing Danny Trejo and anything else. Like, it was super weird for me going go, go, growing up and seeing them in films because I always knew them from Spy Kids. Mm. Yeah. So I had to spend like the first ten minutes being like, "All right, it's not." Gee, it's not the mum. <laughs> it's not whatever she's like. Whatever she called Ingrid, isn't it? I was yeah, like, yeah. Which I don't stand by that that name choice. But fine, we'll get past <laughs> it. Like I, I could kind of like get past that and then see them in like a random gangster, like usually like a very mm. serious film later on. Yeah, it must have been a bit of a shock when you saw Danny Trejo in Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. More, more, more filmmakers should do that. Like it'd be funny if Tarantino just did a kids' film with like all of his mm. like Reservoir Dogs cast or That'd like. Be amazing. I know. I think it would be good as well. 
like I don't know who else I'd like to do it. Wes Anderson's already done it, I guess, and it was barely even a kids' film, but yeah, he's done it like with Fantastic Mr. Fox was really good as well. We still need to watch that. I wouldn't want no one to do it. Do you not think so? No, I don't know because it's a bit too. You take it too serious. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> Kid would be in like a bow tie. Uh, he'd well, be a fun director. Well, Spielberg did the Tintin films, didn't he? Which kind of oh, counts, yeah. but I don't can't say I've ever subjected myself to them. Even if Simon Pegg was involved quite a lot, I think. Hmm. Yeah, speaking of uh, character, we'll bring it back to the film. Uh, speaking of characters and stuff, what do you think about the the twist? Because you were talking about twist before, with uh, like the subversion of thinking it was Junie who was in diapers and it was Carmen. And then there was like the other twist with Minion being the big bad rather than Floop, and Floop's actually just a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what what do you think about that character switch? Plus, also integrating that into like the backstory of like the other characters as well. Like, uh, what's his name? Antonio Banderas's character. Gregorio. Gregorio, yeah. Yeah. I, d- I actually think, thinking about it now, as in, if it was an adult film, it would have been better to keep, swo- like, Floop Swoop. Floop as the villain, because, like, it's got the, you've got the, like, you know, the interesting kind of dichotomy between the kids' TV host and the villain. But because it's a kids' film, I think it was a bit more forgiving to make the TV host nice guy actually be a nice guy and have some background character be the bad one. Yeah. So... Go, although maybe it kind of would be more interesting nowadays to keep Floop as a bad guy, I think I preferred it as a kid, just to be like, oh yeah, the nice TV guy is just a kind of, or the guy who has the kids show is just a kind of p- puppet being yeah. used by the actual bad guy behind the scenes. Mm. So I think that works for it being a kids film. Yeah, and you were kind of that way as well. You're on the side of, you're on the side of him throughout the film. Yeah, and it's good for Junie because otherwise it'd be a bit kind of. You know, he has a bit of a crap enough existence that, like, if his hero was also a villain, it just it's really soul crushing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God, no. Good old Warthog. That kid, he, <laughs> he would not survive school anymore if that was the case. Mm-hmm. Also, bringing that up, where did he pull that toy from? <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a scene where he goes into, like, this imagination, imagination yeah, room. Well. Yeah, and he... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Sorry, my mic just fell out. <laughs> this is going. Like this. Oh. Yeah. I'll hold it like this. Does it, it sound alright? Yeah, it sounds good. Alright, fair enough. So Junie runs into the imagination room and he comes across Mr. Floop. I can't remember his first name. It begins with F, right? No, cl- what? Floop. Uh, he does have. Either way. Yeah, no, he does have a first name. Yeah. And he's like this much I keep bigger version. Augustus, sorry to interrupt because of Augustus <laughs> Gloop. Yeah. It's really bad, but that's <laughs> really jammed in my head now. But he's talking to him about like the warts on his hands and he's saying that he's not scared, he's mad. And then in the middle of this conversation, he just pulls out like a figure of Which him. Which is like 12 inches. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. A colossal. And he's definitely not had it the entire trip. No. So no. I mean, he got he definitely held it earlier on, but at some point he must have had to lose that, right? Mm. Yeah, that 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 could have been a bit distracting, but I didn't really notice it, luckily. No, but I suppose you can't really pick up continuity stuff like that with a kids' film that's just supposed to be more fun than it is people like picking it apart. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, it's mainly kids watching it, so they're not going to be like, "Whoa, where's that <laughs> where did you get that from?" Mm. <laughs> I do, I know. Yeah, they're probably more like, "I want that toy." Yeah. So. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I like the imaginary. Uh, is it the imaginary room, or am uh, I just making that up? Thing, like, yeah. <laughs> thinking of Doctor, yeah, thing, No, Mister Mister Magorian's magical import. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Whatever. My but God. I like his virtual reality room. That'd be fun. Also, just the uh, that'd be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. It's just uh, reminding myself now a little bit with uh, when Gregorio and Ingrid first get out of uh, their restraints and they go around the flute castle. And they, uh, the bit with the floor, yeah, clear floor. Br- yeah, the clear floor. That's the <laughs> it's just fun, fun bits like that. And then when they go into the virtual room and they go through the shoot, and uh, they end up at Floop's dinner table mm. with also one of the best lines in cinema, by the way, <laughs> <In> cinema, <laughs> especially with the context. <laughs> uh, my fingers will snap you. I love that line. Yeah, I'll stab my side fingers. I guess. Do you think it as well. Like there was a scene that we all cringing at with. Um, Antonio Banderas's character kind of fantasizing about beating up Judy's bully's oh. dad. Yeah. But then I also just thought back and I was just like, how weird is it that in a film, everybody's rooting for dads to start, <laughs> like, even the kid, the kids start to, like, go on, dad, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's a weird thing to encourage. Like, if someone's bullying you, ask your dad to beat up their dad. Mm. It's also a very weird thing that 
that like if you're gonna do a flash or like some sort of sequence like that that that's the only one in the film yeah it's just literally in that one one moment for that one character when they're not even the main character yeah <laughs> and plus like he could legitimately beat him up so why would he envision some impossible throwing them to a window stuff when he yeah. could just be like oh well, all right, i would do this this and this and then yeah. incapacitated big oaf i feel i feel like it's just more to big oaf. oh wait no it can't be what because it's for his own benefit no, I was going to say, it's, um, it seems like that would be kind of the weaker dad who doesn't know how to do stuff to fantasize about that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's not. But yeah. you also already know they're a spy. Yeah. So what's the point in that? It's, I didn't it's know. a weird one. Yeah. yeah. The gadgets are fun. Why is everything fluorescent <laughs> green? <laughs> Very clunky. Like, do they not know design? It is funny that they thought everything would be fluorescent <laughs> green by this point. When it's just like, that would just be unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, I do want that lightsaber. And I want the mini cameras. Yeah, the mini cameras. Yeah. There yeah. is a point we were skimming through before, even though I didn't want to, because you two were just quoting it and laughing. Sorry, yeah. and oh, like, yeah, oh no. this bit's coming up. Oh, she's going to fly upwards. <laughs> but there's a part where Junie handcuffs himself to a case. Yeah. And oh. he's like trying to get it off and he just knocks himself out cold. <laughs> and I think that was the only point that I laughed throughout the entire film when I first watched it. <laughs> yeah. It's good slapstick. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only point I laughed. Whereas you guys were just like giggling amongst yourselves while yeah. you were skimming through. Yeah. It's a nostalgic thing, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like it's because it doesn't hold up that well for me. I'll still watch it and be fun. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It reminds me once I went to my uh, parents' house and they had some friends round, and I was just kind of like leaning back, kind of holding my arms or something, or doing like that, and my grip just went. And like that and I just <laughs> smashed this glass completely Jesus. and everyone just looked at me like are you okay I'm just like yeah, I just lost my grip I don't know <laughs> I don't know what happened I'm fine just lost my grip <laughs> literally <laughs> but, uh, yeah going back to the film sorry <laughs> um, yeah I'll still watch it with some fondness but at the same time I can't say that it's a particularly a, a solid film it's just a good time for me but when you <laughs> think that's... about it like what kind of films did your did your like dad and mum try to introduce you to any films they loved when you were a kid? Uh, do you remember anything like for like me that? Uh, specifically with my dad? It was more to do with gritty stuff. So I got to about the age of what? Well, well, not six. The, this, <laughs> <laughs> this <watching good laughs> nah, I got to like <laughs> fourteen, fifteen. And my dad was like, "Right, it's time for you to watch Pulp Fiction," <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." Uh, I haven't really been shown anything specifically, uh, apart from maybe younger, like Star Wars, obviously, that's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. I don't really remember being shown specifically any films, apart from when I was a bit older. But. I remember being shown Scarface by my dad, At growing age. up. Uh, <laughs> Three. <laughs> no, it would have been probably about 14, 15, I think. Hmm. And stuff like Carlito's Way, and quite a lot of, like, that's cool. Gang film. Yeah, yeah, my dad's into a lot. And we used to watch horror films. So I was obsessed with Nightmare on Elm Street when I was like 12. Had all the DVDs, had everything. Mm. But other than that, see, my childhood's very <laughs> different to you guys. But mm. I, there's a lot of my stuff's like to do with talking animals as well. <laughs> so, you know, like cats and dogs. Yeah, yes. oh, cats and dogs. Like the DVD yeah. of that. Yeah, should, me too. Buy the, the video. Do you remember the really the awkward, video, yeah. the really awkward case it had? Oh, you didn't have the DVD. No. It had like a paper case with a weird clip at the end rather than being a normal DVD case. <laughs> oh, it was a you sure you just didn't buy it from some dodgy boy? <laughs> no, no, it was the actual case because it had like a booklet in there and stuff. Oh, oh. that was great. You sure? <laughs> no, it was. Real, I, I, I haven't explained it very well. It wasn't paper; it was card. But rather than being the whole plastic thing, it was like plastic at the back and a plastic clip, and like a card that came oh, okay. around. Oh, okay, I got what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's stupid. One of those, yeah. yeah. What, what were you shown? Like, or kind of? I was just. I don't know. All I was. I guess the point I was trying to make, which I've totally undermined because I don't agree with it, <laughs> <laughs> is that it's okay like? To change your is that like? <laughs> You know, you watch some your parents when you you when you're a kid, you watch some crappier stuff that if you were to try and push it forward on your kid, they'd be a bit like what, and then you'd realize a bit like oh, this doesn't hold up. Yeah, and I think that's kind of one of those that like it would hold up for people who were kids at the time we were kids, mm-hmm. but it just wouldn't really work if we tried to show it to this generation even. Or yeah, like, no, it like it's not a timeless film, but it's a film that really worked during the time it was in. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like you can't yeah. expect everything to to hold up over that kind of time especially like a gadget like even the old bond films i know people love those but to me they're just kind of dumb because yeah. they don't they don't hold up that way you just have yeah. to buy into the whole jazzy weird feel well, it, of it it depends on the type of film like obviously i just said cats and dogs but in the cinema now there's a film called show dogs which is and just it's like talking animals and there's like snow 
Buddy, is that his name? Yeah. And there's quite a few, like, talking animal things, so that's, like, consistent. So for younger kids, that will always be a a thing that you can introduce. But, But, like, the vibe of the film might be totally different to what Cats and Dogs was. Because Cats and Dogs was relatively aggressive, like, if you think about it. There's a lot of wars against this and wars, like, like grizzled, injured cats and stuff. We should watch that. Yeah, I love that film. Plus Jeff Even Stuart Little. Like, I, there's Stuart a lot of Little talking was animal ones. I watched the shit out of Stuart Little. Yeah, <laughs> Did you ever play the game? Sequels. Uh, no, not for long, but I remember the game. So there's Stuart Little too, wasn't it? Yeah, I was yeah. obsessed with that on oh, no, PS4. You, you still play it now. Yeah, I know. It was so weekend. good. He was thinking of games. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll get an idea for The Incredibles game was great. <laughs> uh, I don't think... Did I play that game? I don't know. But I just feel like it, it's just different for each person. Like We were talking about things we used to watch when we were younger and you were like Crystal Maze and I was like Tweenies. <laughs> so it just I think we were different, different. ages by that point. Well, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it just depends on how like well adapted the kid is and if they're open minded enough. Like I, I think that I was more open minded to my dad because every time my dad's like oh this film's amazing I'm like oh yeah is it? And then I feel bad if I said no and then I just start to like it anyway. Oh. I'm just really <laughs> influenced. <laughs> <laughs> which you haven't seen Scarface and things like that, have you? I've still not seen Scarface yet, no. Which I feel None is so. a bit sacrilege on my part. Like yeah. I've never seen The Godfather neither. No, I it's don't not, want to watch that. It's not that amazing. That's mm. more. I just thought it was kind of overrated. It's not as good as Goodfellas. That's a better film. Mm. It's the that, one with Joe Pesci in it. Yeah, that was yeah. re. Was it? It wasn't with you, was it? When I watched it. They, no. re- they re-showed it in a cinema like a year ago, Goodfellas, mm. and I went to see it. Don't remember where or who with. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no idea. It was packed, but it was really, really good to see it again in the cinema. <laughs> and they're doing it with 2001, and yeah. I'm excited to do that. Yeah, I'm excited get to, a chance that. to I thought it was only in the cinema while we're away. It's only on once at the light, but we might be able to watch oh, it Oh, it was else. Was that the one that we saw the trailer for when we last went yeah. to the yeah, cinema? Yeah, it was a great trailer, wasn't it? Like, it seemed cool to me. It had was, so many touches that you see in everything now. Yeah, I was so torn between, like, this could be so good and this could really bore me. Like, it was so in between each point because it was a long-ass trailer, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But to think, like, it has so many conventions of films today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. 67? Something yeah. like that, yeah. Or maybe I'm getting that wrong. Sorry, but I know it's, it was a long time. Yeah. Should watch that the scene, bar. Yes. That'd be good. Oh, yes. <laughs> cool. I'm excited. But anyway, we'll uh, wrap it up on uh, Spy Kids. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, we'll do the review? Yeah. Cool. That's where I'm heading to. <laughs> like, <laughs> Panicking, then. I was like, God, man, don't forget. <laughs> it's your yeah. thing, but... <laughs> This is the 10 star movie review where we put films through the ultimate test for every question we vote yes the film gets one hey yes. he did <laughs> on it one star Fine. I wonder why you're so quiet I was, I was concentrating hard <laughs> just waiting for the V uh, for the ultimate goal is 10 stars <laughs> he's got it as there are that was such a charity <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you charity <laughs> I was going to let you join in with the number as there are I don't know what you got. Three of us. Oh, come on. We've never what? done that no, before. You sure. can't do that. <laughs> As there are three of us, the majority vote wins. Though half stars are up for contention when necessary. And a small disclaimer of the ratings we And today give. is the 3rd of June. How did, how did you not know what I was talking about? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, I'll say that bit. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And a small disclaimer that. of the ratings we give don't always match our enjoyment or experience of the film. This is just a racing system on the 3rd of June. <laughs> uh, now people know when we recorded this. Yeah, Are yeah. you ready? Yeah. Yep. Question number one, does the story make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like spy kids go and save the parents and the world. Mm-hmm. Go on a <laughs> couple of minutes <laughs> while well, they do save the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, question number two: Did the script and the dialogue between characters feel natural? Yeah, I, I like say that, yeah. yeah. Specifically based on the relationships between like Minion and Floop and Junie and uh, Carmen and Ingrid and Gregoria. You know, like you kind of get the vibe that that like they're the a married couple. Yeah. That these are like these are working partners. These guys are brothers and sisters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Question number three: Did you believe that the world of the film existed? Because it's so wacky and like so kind of out there i i believe that it does 
because of the style and the way that it's shot and the way that it's edited because it's it's all like an exaggeration kind of to me it's fantastical isn't it like, yeah i think that's like a torn between like you don't believe it does but you really wish that it did you, you mean know? what for me to think that or no know? like anyone like ah, okay you wish that that kind of place existed but the way it's portrayed doesn't really seem like just between going in a submarine and going between everywhere, it doesn't really seem. Mm. I don't know. Between well, it's down to you two yeah. and something you believed as a kid rather than. Yeah. That's the thing is, as spy films go, there's nothing in this that makes it much more implausible. I know there's like. Yeah. They're not very well hidden whatsoever. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not like much less implausible than than everything else. You know yeah, because I mean? like the way that it's built up, you believe that world in itself exists. So. Okay. so it's getting a star. Well, it's getting a star from me. Yeah, I give it a star. Yeah. So serves irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <Sorry>, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh, question number four. Did you believe that the characters existed in the world of the film? Yeah. 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 Standard family yeah. unit. Pretty much. Uh, question number five. Did you get emotionally invested in the characters? No. Uh, See, do, do we review this on us now or on us back in the day? I believe now. All right, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Back in the day, I liked him, especially Carmen. I was going to say, yeah, you fancied both of them. I fancied them, both so of them. Just I was <laughs> confusing as like a 10-year-old. <laughs> yeah, fair. I was just like, is something wrong uh, with me? Should Carmen be occupying more of my attention? But no. Nah. Adil, the awakening. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is... No one wants to think no, about that. No, move on. Move on. <laughs> so no star no. for that one. Question number six. Did you like the visual and audible elements no. of the film? I'm going to say an asterisk you have to take in consideration the time that it was made. And the theme song. I'm giving on the theme I song I like alone. the theme song. The theme song, song is yeah. great. Yeah. That was it. Do you remember what Dill said the Spy Kids theme was like? Because it's like a film that we've seen recently, but we couldn't remember. Do you remember I kept saying something we've listened to is sound like exactly like the Spy Kids theme song? <sighs> this is on a previous <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Comment if you remember. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I don't like your face. I don't know what like you're doing now. <laughs> That's not. I'm doing the theme. Like it. It not. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I have no idea. I remember I saying now. it, but. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to But give yeah, it a okay, for the actual. I like the theme yeah. song. Uh, there was kind of quite trippy shooting that it was interesting with the way it was yeah. shot. So but I, I feel it. like because it was like 2001, I think that, you know, like it was not bad CG for that time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Spotty, but it was all right. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start for that. Question number seven. We diegetically absorbed, diegetically, sorry, absorbed into the film. Younger me would say yes. Older me would say no. No, I was all over my Not phone. Not a chance. All over yeah. my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, that's how I measure it. It's like how how often am I like checking my phone? All over it. I was all over it this time. <laughs> Did not leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's deliberate. I'm leaning into uh, his creepy thing. <laughs> Why? Qu That's his job. I don't Question know. number eight. <laughs> Did the film have a good ending? Yeah. Yeah. Also, it sets it up nice. Well, actually, I don't know. It's a little bit cringy at the end. Wait, how does it end again? Ends with everyone around the breakfast table and George Clooney oh, ringing up. Oh, president. For the kids. And then, yeah, yeah. And he's asking for Cowan and Junie to do the thing. And then they're like, no, if you want us all, you're going to have to have us as a family. Oh, yeah. That was and great. And then it cuts to black. It's empowering. I like yeah. that. Yeah. When you so, sat there, like, getting annoyed with your mum, you're just like, oh, I should like my mum more. She <laughs> might be a spy. <laughs> <laughs> she might be as <laughs> It's the only reason why. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no? Yeah. I think it gets it on the ending. Yeah. It's a nice, happy ending. Round For a kid's off. family, it's, it's probably not the too better. bad. For probably one of the strongest sides of the film, to be honest. For a kid's family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, For, a family. Right now. <laughs> For a family film, I'm trying to find the... Oh, it was a Wonder Woman tune. Thank you. Ah. I didn't see it. That's why I want to remember Yeah, we'll do it's it. It's the same we'll... thing. Yeah. Uh, it's just pure... Steal it. <laughs> Someone sue them. Uh, <laughs> question number nine. Did you enjoy the film? 100% yes. Yeah, I liked it watching it back, but only because of the nostalgia of, like, remembering the lines and, you know, you get that same kind of giddy feeling you had as a kid. Oh, just wait till I fit the film. Yeah, no, I think I, I enjoyed watching it with you because it was something new, but... Yeah, I'll give it the star for that. All right. And question it's number 10. better than it should be. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. I know. Did the film have personal impact on you? Yes. Oh, I can't give no. it that either. I, I liked it, but I can't <laughs> give it personal impact. No, not at all. Uh, what was the personal impact? Oh, just the fact that I loved it 
and loved being in that world as I watched it. Like, I used to watch it consistently. Like, I'd watch the first one one night. I'd watch the second one the next night. And then the night after that, I'd watch the first oh, one again like and continue, that, yeah. the, continue the cycle. Yeah, I loved... The, I still love these films. So you I could try to make a that, case if you like. Try nah, and win us it's over. not going to work, though. It could win me over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> oh. So just it for saying bye, shall we? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> smack, smack me in the face. <laughs> Good job it wasn't with so my So how many mind. stars is that? Um, <laughs> let's count up, shall Six we? Six or seven. One, Ridiculous. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven stars. Should have been no more than four, but... <laughs> 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 I mean, it's already got a better rating than. Don't uh, say it. This is gonna make me annoyed. In between his movie, that's fine. Avengers <laughs> Infinity not. War, which yeah, is that's disappointing. That's all, that's all me. <laughs> better review than also Infinity better War. than Ready Player One, which you guys Definitely. were particularly yeah, <laughs> harsh on. Yeah. No. I'd rather look at a blank screen for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> sp- Spy Kids. Oh, something just went in my oh, eye. Jesus I can't get into my eye because I got glasses on. I was trying to find You had it, such a it? moment then. You forgot <laughs> where your eyes were. Well, no, <laughs> like it's because I had a barrier <laughs> between me and my eye. Because I forgot I had glasses on. So I'm like, sorry, you boys. Where's my eye gone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Smooth. God so. damn it. So, yeah, seven stars for Spy Kids. That was a fun time. Uh, yeah, sorry about no film news this week. It's just we're doing something in advance, but we will be back and hopefully properly with a proper schedule on when we're uploading stuff because we've been a bit all over the place next week. (laughs) You guys ready to end it there? Sure. Yeah. (laughs) Well, <laughs> thank you very much for listening. If you have listened all the way through, if you haven't, go fuck yourself now, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, would they hear that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's get to the end. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to keep listening to us, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, any sort of platform. Sound? No, nope, not platform. Nope. Yep, uh, podcast platform. It's a Scottish platform. <laughs> Such a bad job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'd appreciate it if you did. And if you already are, then thank you. I am Matt Lidster. I've been your host and I've been joined by my partner in crime, Sophie Ellis. See you. And Mr. Adele Moir. See you. And we shall see you uh, next week. Bye. See you. See you. See you. See you. Bye.